Hi everyone, it is Leo Brown and I am here once again to do another edition of Let's Talk About It. So today's edition of Let's Talk About It is going to be about bitter black men and women. Now before I go into this, because this is going to be mm, a bit controversial, but before I go into it, I want to say thank you to all my subscribers, everyone who shares the video, who likes it, who comments, who even says negative things. I thank you because at least that's letting me know that you are listening to what I have to say. Um, and also keep in mind, these are just my opinions. You know, you don't have to agree. You can agree to disagree here. We're all adults. Um, but, you know, I figured I'd like you to do something where we can all talk and have a dialogue. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so bitter black women. I'm going to go into that first. Now, I'll say this. I think that Black women in general, and this is just me, I think Black women have, and luckily it is starting to change, Black women have gotten a bad rap, I, I, just as a whole. I really do believe that. Uh, black women have been accused of being angry. They've been accused of being uh, slovenly. They've been accused of being the seductress. They've been accused of being all these things since they first brought us, our ancestors over here. Um, luckily that has changed a lot. And, you know, luckily now black women are starting to understand not only their power, but their magic. Hence the, the hashtag black girl magic, which I think is wonderful. And black girls rock. So I think that's awesome. And they do, because I come from a black girl. I come from a black woman. And I will always love and respect and honor the black woman because that is from whence I came. And without that black woman, there would be no me. Um, but I will say this. I think that the bitterness, when I talk about bitter black women, I mean, and men too, because I'm going I'm to get into that too. But when I talk about bitter black women, what I mean is you have, say you're married to a man that you knew when you met him, before you even married him, you knew that he was full of stuff, you knew he was full of shit. You knew that he was not the man for you. You knew he was not capable of growing. I'm not going to say changing, but of growing. Growing in a way that is healthy, that is conducive to the partner that you wanted. And so you marry him anyway, thinking, oh, well, I can change him. I just, I'm going to put this coochie on him real good. And he, you know, that'll stop him from straying away. And years down the line, that doesn't happen. Okay. He's still sneaking around. He's got, you know, he's a rolling stone. He's got other, you know, there are other relatives out here. You got half brothers and sisters that you don't know nothing about until the funeral. You got mistresses calling you, you fighting over him, things like that. And in turn, after all this happens, you become very cold. You become very emotionally uh, unresponsive. You become guarded. You become very unnurturing to your children. And in turn, that makes you, you become a bitter black woman. And that's what I mean when I say that. And the only reason why, one of the reasons why I'm actually saying this and even talking about this is because as of late, I've been seeing a lot of this. And even in my own family, I'm, I'm not going to sit up here and talk about something that I don't know anything about. Because trust me, honey, I know this. I know what this is to see women in my family, child to the women in my family, uh, that have been done wrong, that have been wronged. But then I also look at it and go, but wait a minute, you made that choice. Now, I'm not putting it all on you, but I'm gonna put at least 50% on you. Because my thing is this right here. You knew the man was full of shit when you met him. You knew that. But then, but then let's go back even further. So let's just say you have a mother who is not capable of giving you the emotion and 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 the nurturing and the affection and the, the, the wisdom that you need as a woman to survive and thrive, not just to survive. Because here's the thing, I think for a lot of black women, and I'm not going to, you know what, I'm not even going to make this a black woman thing. For a lot of women who grow up in dysfunctional homes, they're not taught to thrive. And when I say thrive, I mean having a healthy sense of self-worth, having a healthy sense of self-esteem, knowing who they are at their core and saying, you know what, I know I deserve better than this. Yeah, you fun to play with, 
I'm not going to sit up here and lie. The dick is nice, baby. Thank you. <laughs> you know what to do with that, honey. Thank you so much. However, I'm not going to marry you, nor am I going to date you long term because you're not conducive to what I want and I need from a man. You see? But a lot of women who go, grow up in dysfunction are taught to survive. My mother being one of them. Shout out to my mama. Okay? They're taught that. that because their mother and their mother and their mother, that's all they knew how to do. Let me tell you a little bit of a story. So my grandmother, may she rest, my grandmother had 12 kids. Pretty much the siblings. Okay? Uh, my grandmother and grandfather were married for 25 years. My grandmother and grandfather, father's marriage was tumultuous as hell. I've heard stories about it that make my head curl, straighten, and press. Okay? Um, and in that, my mother, my aunts, my uncles were reared and raised in that. Okay? So you have a mother, and this is my grandmother, who from her mother wasn't taught how to love herself wasn't taught anything about, you know what, you deserve better. Wasn't taught to be independent, not dependent, mind you, but independent in the sense of not that I don't need someone, I do need someone. However, I don't need you in the sense of, well, if you leave me, I'm not gonna, I can't exist. You see what I'm saying? My grandmother wasn't taught that. So in turn, she taught her children you got to not depend on somebody, but you got, in other words, how do I say this? I don't want to say, no, that's not the word I want to use. People are disposable. People, you, you use them for what you need to get done, and that's it. And I think people in general are taught that, that kind of what's in it for me, kind of right too. And so growing up, I didn't see, and I'm even going to bring myself into this, because I myself have been a bit of black man. I didn't see healthy relationships. I didn't see, and I don't mean like just intimate love. I mean friendships. I mean family dynamics. I mean all of that. I, I didn't see that growing up. I saw a lot of unhealthiness. And in turn, it made me better. And I'm going to get to the men part in a minute, too. But just imagine if you grow up with that, and you go out into the world and you meet with men and you're longing for, for nurturing, you're longing for love, companionship on top of having a father, because I'm, I'm bringing my, my grandpa in this too and may he rest as well, having a father that was emotionally distant, having a father that was affectionate, having parents that even though they were present, they were there physically, they were not there emotionally. Can you imagine what it does? And now, mind you, what I'm saying is in this, I'm not saying that, you know, um, that being bitter or being guarded is justifiable. But what I'm trying to map out here is the reasoning behind it. But what I've noticed lately is that a lot of women, and I'm, and I'm going to stick with women, and Black women in particular, you know, now it's like being bitter is commonplace. Now being bitter is accepted. Like, you can even see it in music. You can see it in music. You can see it in, in TV. Can, can we say love and hip-hop? Can we say city girls? Can we say, um, well, not so much niggas. Well, no, in some ways, Meg Thee Stallion. Like, <clears throat> the ratchet, the ratchetness. All men are for his money. All men are for his dick. You know what I mean? Like, men ain't shit. Well, I can get, I'm going to give them for their money. So... But you claim you want a man. Look at, I mean, case in point, look at Cardi B. Cardi B is a really good example because all her music is about, I want me some money. I want a man with money. You got to have money, 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 money. Or look at Trina. I, and I like, and, and my you, I like these artists. But just imagine what example this is setting for young women, for black women. What are you telling the young women out here? Like, so basically, don't be with a man because you care about him and he's great for you and he validates, not validates you, but he helps you to grow. He helps you to learn. You help each other to grow and learn and, 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 and progress. But be with him because 
one, he can buy you shit. He can buy you a bag. Two, he, he makes money. And three, he's got a big penis. So he's disposable. He's a thing. He's not a person. See? But then you have women out here that literally get with men just for their money. And, or they get with a man. Or they get with a man because, well, you know what? I didn't have great parents. So I not only have daddy issues, I have mommy issues too. Because mommy issues are a real thing. Trust it. As somebody who has it, and as somebody who's working through, it's a real thing. Um, but they go out into the world, and they meet these men that basically tell them what they want to hear. And, you know, use them, abuse them, either physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually. You know what I'm saying? And then they end up having children, and the cycle continues. And then they end up, and then by the time they get 30, 40, 50, my age or up, and I'm not 50, but I'm, I'm in my late 30s, they're bitter. They're mad. And they don't know what it is to, to, to be with a decent man. Not that they don't want one, they do. But they're so tired of fighting, not of thriving, but of surviving, that when they meet a decent man who, now, may, mind you, he may not have the best job. He might be a, 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 a sanitation engineer, or he might be a, a guy that, that builds quarter legs, or he might work at McDonald's, but yet he's a decent man. He might have children, but he takes care of his kids. He's a single dad. Well, I don't want him. He's too good. He's No, he don't make enough money. No, he can't. First of all, I really need women, and, and in particular, not all, and let me just, okay, let me say this too. Not all Black women are like that. Let me make that very clear because I don't want people to be, well, you know, I, no, I know that, ma'am. I know that. I know that. I'm just talking about for this edition of Let's Talk About It, the bitter black women I have seen, okay, that I've experienced and how it affects and how it infects and affects our community. It does. Let's just be real. And this is across the door. This is not just for black people because this is in every community. But today we're doing black people, okay? Now, um, and then they're like, oh, he's too nice, or he doesn't make enough money, or they'll find something to get out of it. You know what I mean? And or it's or they become very materialistic. It's all about their hair and their nails and you know, looking cute and you know, all of that and and, and being the girl that can twerk the most and you know, in in the makeup and all that. And it's like, well, wait a minute, what about you what about you maybe going to therapy and breaking some of these patterns what about you teaching your little girl and little boy that you know what don't do what i did don't make the choices i made because i didn't know any better you know what i'm saying like that's why now i can look at my own mother and go wait you didn't have any examples of what it was to be a healthy thriving full whole centered woman you didn't have that so i can't fault you for what you didn't have okay but that's why I'm saying to the women of today, whether you have kids or not, no matter how old you may be, it's never too late to start working on yourself and figuring yourself out and saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to um, continue that. You know what I mean? I don't want to continue that stigma that I'm an angry woman, I'm an angry black woman at that. And I'm not saying that you need to go out here and get a PhD and be supremely educated, because if you really want to know the truth, education is basically memorization. If you can memorize, you can get a degree. Okay? So, let's, let's, let's start there. But what I'm saying is, acknowledge your hurt, acknowledge your pain, and work on it. Work through it. You know what I mean? Don't take it out on yourself, and most importantly, don't take it out on your children. And let me, and, and, and let me give you guys an example of what I mean. What I mean is, if you guys ever watch paternity court, if you ever watch divorce court, you have a bunch of women and men, and it's mainly black women, especially on paternity court, oh my God, who, are on, who, who basically are trying to trap a man and having a child, taking care of a child. And it's not about the child at all. It's about, oh, I need money. Not all women on paternity court do this, but a lot of them do. And I'm like, wait a minute. So you out here living your best life, which there's nothing wrong with, but you're not protecting yourself enough to say, hey, let me figure out who the father of my child is. And you get mad at him 
you got to take some responsibility in this too. I'm not saying that he's right in what he's doing, but you also have to say, you know what? I should have taken, you know, birth control. I should have told you to wear a condom. I should have gotten a, you know, an IUD. I should have done something to protect myself, you know, knowing, and then, and then you have some mothers who are not grandmothers getting mad. Well, you, you had to take care of your baby and this, and that, and that, and it was like, okay, so you taught her that. You taught her that that's all a man is for. You taught her to, to pick men that are beneath her. You taught her to, to see less of herself, to see her self-worth in a man and not in her. But yet she's the first one. I'm a queen. Well, if you were a queen, then you would know. You don't open your legs for just anybody that gives you a smile and a wink. Okay? You know, and then you, and then, but then let's go even further. Then you have women. Well, I don't want a man. Men ain't shit. Okay, so now, you know, let's go into it. So let's just say you have a little boy. You have a son. And the son's father is not around. Not because the father doesn't want to be around, but because you, as a mother, don't like the fact that the father moved on. And the father basically said, you know what? I love you, but I'm not in love with you. He broke the relationship off, or he got remarried, or he just said, fuck it, I want to be single. But what do you do as a black woman? Not all, but some. You make the child pay for that. Where you ain't, your daddy ain't shit. What does that have to do with me? I didn't have to be here. I'm, I'm just saying, I did not, you know, I'm speaking for the child. I, the child didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask you to lay down a hand on me. Don't be mad at me because he, went, he walked away from me. Or better yet, you pushed him away. Because that happens too. And you thinking, oh, well, if I give him this puss and he has a kid with me, that's going to make him stay. I need to break it to a lot of women that may watch my channel. But I'm going to say this, and, I'm gonna, and I really want you to hear me. Just because you got good coochie don't mean the man's going to stay. That's just good coochie. And coochie's a dime a dozen out here. If you don't believe me, check Twitter and Instagram. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay? So, no. You know, and so the little boy grows up without a father. Or he grows up with toxic versions of masculinity. He grows up around men who basically do what the father what you claim the father did, even though the father may even try to make contact with the child. He grows up with men who are distant. He grows up with men who are very, who believe the same thing that, that, that women do, but the opposite way, that women are just a means to an end, that a woman's supposed to take care of him. He grows up being dependent. He grows up being a mama's boy and having mama issues. That's not healthy. And so that rests on you. And then, well, I did everything by myself. I didn't need no man. First of all, we're not going to give you a fucking cookie and metal because you decided to take care of a child on your own. That's what you're supposed to do. That's your fucking job as a parent. That's your, you're responsible for your child because you brought him into the world. You brought him, them, she, he. You brought them into the world. Let's, let's start there. So I'm not giving you a cookie because uh, you you know, you always say, oh, I make my own money. I don't need no man to do stuff. But yet, let a man fuck you real good. And you let a man, you know, use your car. Let a man watch your kids. Though you don't know who the man is. Right? And then you get mad when the man turns around. I'm not saying for all, but for some. The man is either fucking your son, fucking your daughter, or both. The man's bringing in strange women into your house, or men. Okay, the man's out here selling drugs. The man's out here, you, you know, doing something, but you don't care as long as you have a man. But then when that man leaves you or that relationship dissipates, then you bitter. And then you rely on your kids. And when your kids get sick of your shit, and your kids realize, you know what? Mommy, I love you, but you got work to do. Then you mad. Well, don't nobody love me. No, we love you. We just don't like you. We don't like what you're bringing to the table. Because what happens is, one of the children says, you know what? I love you, but I also love you enough to call you out. And say, you know what? I love you, but 
you went about it kind of fucked up. Now, I'm not saying that, um, you know, that the mother in this scenario, th that, what am I trying to say? Because I want to make sure I'm right, but not right. I want to make sure my words make sense. Um, I'm not saying that, I'm not justifying what she did, but what I'm saying is, there comes a point in time where you have to look in your own mirror and call yourself out. And what I've seen, like I said, if you watch Paternity Court, if you watch even Judge Mathis or any of the court shows, you watch them and you see these women and I'm like, who made you this way? Like, what are you doing? What makes you think that a baby is gonna fix this? This is deep internal stuff. This all had to do with that child. Like, what are you doing? And then, oh, well, I don't, I'm independent. I can, or you watch my, you know, the classic Moore show. Come on now, y'all. Come on. Women, women, black women in particular, you have to do better. And even the older ones, well, Jesus is my boyfriend. Sit your ass down somewhere. Sit down. There's nothing wrong with you saying, you know what? I want a man. I need a man. There's nothing wrong with you saying, I need a man. I, not that I need a man to take care of me. No, 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 no. I don't mean that. But I need a man. I need a man that is loving. I need a man that is kind. I need a man that is secure. I need a man that 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 knows who they are. And we grow together. There's nothing wrong with you saying it. It doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you simple. It doesn't make you any of that. And I think for a lot of Black women, and we're learning to do this, that it's okay to show vulnerability. But let's let's go back. Black women have been taught from day one, don't let men see you sweat. Don't let people see you sweat. That's how you end up getting used out here. So I do understand it. But what I'm saying is this bitterness has to stop because if anything, it's, it's a generational thing. I know people in my own family that literally are on, like that are, that are all single moms, like, I could, I mean, I could go on down. The, and, and let me also say this. There's nothing wrong with being a single parent. I was raised by one. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not down on single parents at all. Because if you are capable of, of, of raising your children on your own, and you and, your, you and the, your child's father or mother, you know, you can't make it work, that's fine. That makes sense. But don't sit up here and take it out on your kids if the father or mother wants to be around their children. I've seen that happen. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that. Like don't don't be mad at them and take it out on your on your on your children by pushing the, the, the other spouse or the other parent away. Don't do that because you're robbing your children of moments and memories that they could use with with that with that parent. And also you're robbing your children of choices. Because sometimes in life, you have to allow your kids to see, you know what, here's why me, me and your father or your mother, we don't get along. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you be around them. I'm going to let you see what kind of person they are. And then from there, you make your own judgment call. Period. That's what you should do. And the one thing I want to say this for the women is the one thing, I, and I tell this to women of every color that allows me to say that they have children. Never, ever, ever disrespect your, the child's father in front of your kids. Don't do that. Because my thing is, you weren't saying that when you were with them. Because there was one point in time where you did love them. Even despite all the red flags that you saw, that you didn't want to pay attention to, there was one point in time where you did care about the child's father. So don't do that. Don't do that. Do, do not do that. That's not fair to them. Because what people don't understand is that when you dumb down the other parent, you're actually dumbing down the other part of the child. Because you got to understand, it took two to tangle. So if I'm part of you, if I'm part of my mom, and I'm part of my dad, and my mother is, or let's reverse it, my father's down in my mom, calling my mom all kinds of hoes and you know, she's a slut and this and that and 
she ain't no good. Okay, so how am I gonna view women when I go out into the world? I'm gonna view women like my mother. I'm gonna think women, all women are sluts, all women are no good. Um, she's not dependable. She, I can't rely on her. I can't rely on women. I can't rely on anyone. So then that in turn makes me better. So when I go out into the world, I gotta have literally somebody that's, that's willing to chisel at me. You know what I mean? Especially if I don't have the means or I don't know that it's okay for me to go to therapy and work that shit out and realize, wait a minute, that's not my issue. That's my parent projecting their issue onto me. You see? So it's like, I caution people, do not do that. That's not fair. Because like I said, you didn't say all that when you was fucking and when you was making them. Just saying. You know, and also for some for some of my black women, stop ignoring the red flags. Okay, so the guy you meet, he's cute. Don't get me wrong, he's fine. But he has two baby moms. He has two baby mothers. He can't keep a job. He's childish. He's emotionally unavailable to you. He's closed. He's quick to anger. He doesn't want to um, uh, work through his issues with his own mother or father. He feels that everyone abandons him, but yet I want to. I want That's my boo. That's my everything. Really? Really? Oh, I know. We'll have a baby. So you think a baby's gonna solve this? But then you also have your own toxic issues. You have father issues. You feel that every man abandons you. You feel that men are anything. The women in your family are also bitter. So you've been taught by the women in your family that men are not to be trusted. You can't trust people. But yet you get with this person and what happens? In this chaos, you have a child. And you think, oh, well, that's going to make it better. Okay, it'll make it better for a while. But then guess what happens? That cycle starts all over again. So I say this to my black women, not to all of them, but to some. Be mindful. And if you if you know that you're becoming bitter, if you know that you have issues regarding not just relationships in the intimate sense, but even friendships, even friendships with other women, because that's one thing I see too. Women stop competing with each other. Stop competing about who has the cutest hair and the, the tiniest waist and the fattest head. Who gives a shit? Because trust me, when gravity takes hold, it won't matter. He'll be Who gives a damn? Stop it. It's not that serious. So get help. Talk to someone. Go to a counselor. There are places you can go and get help. Work on it. Write about it. You know what I mean? Talk to your mom about the issues that you and your mother went through when you were a teenager. Because trust me, there's some stuff. Because here's the thing that I've, that I've learned. Women who tend to be bitter like that, and especially what I've noticed within our, you know, my community is there's some stuff that's, that's stemming from like when they were, they were younger. They were in their formative years. And they were like, my mother wasn't there for me. Or my mother didn't teach me to be a woman. Or my mother didn't teach me that my body was, was worthy of having a man that loved me to lay down with. You know what I mean? My mother didn't teach me that it was okay to be sexual and that I'm not a slut. I'm not a hoe. You know, if I'm out here being safe and being smart and being selective with the men that I'm with. Um, or, you know, thanks to, you know, having a, a decent mother who knew who she was, I didn't have to run into the arms of these dudes out here that are just using me because of my body. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, talk about it if you can. Maybe not to your own mother, but maybe to someone that can help. You know, work through it because we have to break, we have to break that cycle. We just have to. And this has been on my heart to talk about. So that's why I'm talking about it because I think it's important. So now I'm gonna move on to black men. Now with black men, and I'm gonna say this, not all black men are like this, I know that, okay? But with the black men that I'm talking to, this is for y'all. So, and this is for gay, straight, bi, everybody. So, black man. I'm a black man. I'm very proud of being a black man. I'm proud of the DNA that runs in my veins. Very much so. And the one thing I notice about a lot of black men is this. 
we have been taught, not all of us, but some of us have been taught that it, it's, a, it's a double standard. That for us, we can go out and fuck and, and, and just get it in with any and everybody and not have and not hold ourselves accountable or be responsible for the things we do and for the people that it impacts. And that can be children, that could be partners we sleep with, anybody. Okay? So the one thing I say is stop being a stud. Okay? You ain't a bull no more, baby. You don't, you're not a buck. Stop that. There's nothing wrong with being sexual. And this is for women too. There's nothing wrong with being a sexual person and, and enjoying and exploring your sexuality. But when you're doing it to escape, when you're doing it just for bragging rights, something's wrong in that. Just saying. And don't get me wrong. I'm, and I'm saying this, I'm actually saying it because I've done this kind of stuff. Like I have. I'm not going to lie. I have done it. I have been like, yeah, I did that. Just because there's nothing wrong with you saying, well, you know what? I wanted to do this, so I did Nothing wrong with that. But then when you hit about 30, 35, 40, you start to get a little bitter because you did not nurture the relationships you should have nurtured. Or you didn't nurture yourself. Or you were around men who didn't teach you that you know what, I'm not saying you need to be married to this one woman all, or one man all your life or one person, but they didn't teach you that you know what, there's nothing wrong with you having, you can have your fun but you can also have healthy relationships too. Or that it's okay to show your vulnerability. It is okay to cry and express yourself. And not everything has to be anger. and Not everything has to be, to be, you know, oh, I can't trust that person. Or, you know, uh, people are against me. Or not everybody's abandoning you. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of it, a lot of it comes from, from the people that we're around too, because I can give you a prime example. The men that I was around, that my mother brought around as boyfriends, they were not healthy examples of how to be a man. I was raised around men who either did one or two things. They either struck fear into me or they wanted me to be hyper-masculine. Period. And, and let me go, let me get, digress to one more thing for black women too. Not for all, but for some. Stop emasculating the men you're with. Stop doing that. Stop making them feel like, cause, cause women do it too. Women, my mother was, I love my mom, but my mother was one of them. Man up, uh, what you crying for? Crying's not a weakness. Stop saying that shit. And then you wonder why the men out here are doing what they do. That's why. Because they're taught, well, my mother taught me that we're not supposed to do that. My grandmother said the same thing. I need to man up. I need, now I'm not saying that you need to be whining every five minutes. But damn, if you need to cry, bro, let it out. It's okay. If you want to hug your friend, let it out. If you want to tell your friend that he looks nice, let it out. It don't mean you gay. If, if, if you want to go and get your brows done, if you want to get your nails done, if you want to get your feet done, that what you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means proper grooming. That's all. It just means I don't want crusty shit on my feet. I don't want my brows looking like I have a unibrow. And I don't want my nails looking like I've been digging in my ass all day. That's what that means. That just means healthy grooming. Period. Stop emasculating for the for some of the black women. Please don't be emasculating the men you're with. And even the men you're around. Don't do that. Don't make them feel less because they're not the the the, the picture of masculinity that you want. Okay, fine. But don't predict it onto them. Okay, fine. You know what I mean? Like, come on now. Stop that. Just saying. Stop it. Let them be them. And for black men, black men have to stop going into this whole thing of, well, I have to be masculine. Just even I, now, I'm going to be real. I buy into it too. Because let's, let's, let's bring it all out. In the gay community, that's what it's all about. It's all about looks. It's all about masculinity. You know, even though now that's changing too because people are becoming more more open, which I think is good, and more tolerant. But if you go on any gay app, whether it be Jack, Grinder, Scruff, it doesn't matter what it is, you hear, I want masculinity. Listen here. Listen. Listen, listen, Linda, come close. Okay. By me being a male, 
I'm masculine. Why? Because I am of the male gender. Period. End. It's not about me lifting weights. It's not about me, you know, oh, it's not about any of that. It's not about me having a barrel chest. You know, those things are. I love me some of that. But it's not about any of those things. It's about you being yourself. Because the one thing that, I, that I'm learning at the age of 38, soon to be 39, is I have to be me. And no, am I the most hyper masculine dude? No. But then let's, but let's keep it real here. Because then on, on the flip, you have a lot of men who want hyper femininity. You want, you want a man or you want a woman to be very submissive to you. To be whatever kind of music you like. You know, to be all of that. That doesn't, now, I won't say it doesn't exist. It does. But you have to allow that to be a choice. Because like I always say, submission is permission. So men, stop putting these things on yourself and on other people. Just be who you are. And if they don't like it, they don't like it. Fuck it. Because trust me, there's a lid for every pot. Because I used to think, I used to really think, well, God, I'm not masculine enough. I'm not a man. Because I don't play sports. I am more into, you know, and I'm talking about me a little bit. I'm digressing. Don't worry, I'm coming back. Um, you know, I'm more into dance. I'm more into the performing arts. But if you look at that, that is a sport. If you look at people that play violins, if you look at people that, that dance ballet, if you look at people that are creative in other ways aside from the sports genre, that is a sport in that. And, there, and, and those are different outlets, you know? And there's nothing wrong with you loving sports either. There's nothing wrong with you being um, masculine or, or what we deem in, in our culture to be masculine. If that's who you are, that's who you are. But the point is, be who you are. You don't have to put on the front. If you know you're not like that, that's not you. Because I think for a lot of black men, we feel like we have to be, you know, hypermasculine. No, you don't. Because trust me, like I said, my hypermasculinity was either beat into me or it was forced upon me by playing sports. And I'm like, I'm not a sports person. I like dance. I wanted to be Paula Abdul, Jenna Jackson, you know. Uh, in some ways, I still do. Anyway, but I wanted to do that. I'm not into that, you know, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but that's not what, what encompasses me. And what I find is when you don't allow men to express themselves, they will internalize it, and they'll express it in other ways. That's why you have Black men out here being angry. That's why if you listen to a lot of rap, if you listen to a lot of mumble rap, it's always about taking pills and Percocets and mop. Why? Because it's escapism. Rather than me focusing on the pain and saying, you know what, I hate the fact that I can't show my, my true emotion. I hate the fact that I can't, you know, that I have to, that for some reason I have to be a baby dad. Because let's be real, because with, with Black men, that culture, that's ingrained deep in us. That we have to have a symbol, which is always a child. It's in some ways, a it's either a child or it's money. You know, so it's like, but not all men want that. Some of us want to be nerds. Some of us are geeks. You know what I mean? Not, not all black men want that. Not all black men want to be muscular and buff. Some of us are thick. Some of us are, are chubby. Some of us are in the middle. Some of us are skinny. You know, so what I'm saying to black men is don't allow what culture has thrown at you and projects at you. Don't internalize that to make you into a better person and stop being a stud. Please, because, you know, it's like, no, don't do that. And just because people around you somewhat applaud the bullshit you do, it does not give you the right to be irresponsible. Don't be out here. You don't keep a job. You don't know how to maintain a relationship. You don't, have, you don't know how to communicate. Don't do that because that's fucking you up. Because when you get my age and older and you want to be with a real woman, you ain't going to meet them. Why? Because you aren't capable of that. You're not capable of holding a decent conversation. You, you're too busy trying to, trying to chase after, like, you know, uh, chase after young, young girls. Or, in my case, young boys. Because I've seen it. I've seen dudes that are my age and older than me that are, like, dating dudes that are 22. I understand it if, if that's what you, 
How do I say this? I, I can understand and we all have preferences. But if you literally are dating younger, just because older women or older men or men your age intimidate you, something's wrong with that. So black men out here, the ones that I'm talking to, I'm going to need y'all to get that together. Stop it. And I'm going to need you to really take care of your sexual health. You know what a fucking condom is. Use the damn thing. For my gay black men out here, you know what condoms are. You know what true body is. It's not hard out here. Okay? And let me just say this for my, for my black gay men and for my, my questioning, my, my sexual men. Listen here. There's nothing wrong with you saying you like what you like. Be open, be honest. Because what happens for a lot, and this is how it goes to the, the women too, what happens is when you're not open and honest, not only with you, but with those that you partner with, you choose to partner with, that creates bitterness too. So now, I'm not saying that being on the DL is bad, because here's, and, and, I'm, and, and I may get some flack for this, but what I'm saying to my men is this, because, and believe me, there are women on the DL too. What people need to understand and what a lot of, and this is a whole other video, but, what a, but I want to go into this a little bit. But what people don't get is that coming out, number one, is not for everybody. It's a lot like college. And number two, it's a process. And number three, it's not easy. And number four, there's a difference between being down low or low down and a difference between being discreet. Discretion, discretion means, excuse me, my country accent. Discretion means, okay, if you come up to me and you ask if I'm bisexual or if I like transgender women or men or if I'm a lesbian, I'll tell you yes. But people at my job don't know that because when I'm at work, I'm at work. Okay? Or everybody in my family knows that I'm gay except for Grandma Pearly. Because Grandmother Pearly is 95 on her second pacemaker. And she might pass out knowing that I like to be. Okay? That's discretion. Down low could be, well, I'm married. I have kids, but I'm living a double life. My wife doesn't know, or vice versa. I'm married. I have kids. My husband doesn't know, but I like women. Because that happens too. But my thing is, we have to stop shaming that because people do things for different reasons. I'm not saying that it's right, but we have to stop shaming that. We do. Because it's like sometimes you get in situations where you can't, it can't be helped. You have to marry that person. Like case in point, the person might get pregnant. And, they, and the parents are like, well, no, since you made that baby, you have to stick with it. And, and trust me when I tell you, women and men who deal with DL women and men know the T. They're not, they're not stupid. They know. They're waiting on their partner to tell, but they know. They know. Trust me. I've been around them enough to know. They know. So oftentimes in life, we have to stop that. And I'm going to say this for black men, too. Stop apologizing for being sexual, for being gay, bisexual, transgender, whatever. Quit apologizing for that. Quit apologizing for liking it. When you know deep down it does. Stop with the fucking homophobia. Because the biggest homophobe I've ever met in my life were other black men. Stop it. When you know good and hell well, you want that to be you. Okay? That's a whole nother video. But you know what I mean? Like, come on now, man. Like, stop that. If you're comfortable, if a person, if a man is comfortable, or a woman for that matter, if a person is comfortable within their sexuality. They don't care that their son, their husband, their wife, their uncle, their grandmama, their great grandma on, on the father's side, twice removed, was gay. They don't give a shit. Why? Because it doesn't affect them. Let's just let's call it what it is. So, because I see a lot of that. I see a lot of misogyny now because people are being open, like Billy Porter. You know, you got um, who else? Lil Nas X, you know, and because they're wearing dresses, that's been going on for years. This, none of this is new. None of this is new. We are in the age of Aquarius. It's just coming out now. 
That's the only difference. And I'll do a video about that too. So with black men, stop internalizing that. Stop internalizing, well, I have to be a certain way. You know, or case in point, another thing that I see black men doing a lot. And I hear a, I hear this a lot from black men. You're not black enough. What is that? So because I choose to speak the English language with clarity, I choose to enunciate my words. I choose to use proper English and etiquette when I go out in public. When I'm at home, different story. When I'm in, when I'm in public, when I'm on the phone, I choose to to not vocalize, but to um, to speak with clarity, with enunciation, with pronunciation. I want to be white. No. We have to stop doing that. And that's for black men and black women alike. And that's for the, and that's now, and I'm speaking to the bitter, the ones that believe, well, this is all we have to do. And I'm going to say this. I've been guilty of that. I have been so guilty of that. Friends can attest to it. I have been very guilty of, of, of doing that judgment. That's not true. Every black experience is different. Not everybody is the Evans. Not everybody is the Hustables. Not everyone are the Winslows. Some of us are a mix of all three. That doesn't make us any better or any less. It makes us us. Okay? So these are all the things I wanted to say. I know I probably rambled in some areas, but I really wanted to say this to really encourage this because I think this is important. I think we have to sit down as a collective, as a people, and talk about the things that, you know, that make us grow apart. Because I, I honestly do see that sometimes in life with black men and black women, not with all black men and black women, that the women are here, the men are here. And I actually find that kind of sad. And, you know, it's like, that's, it shouldn't be that way. Now, mind you, I know that good and hell well, we will never have a talking, you know, Africa, you know, like, that's never going to happen because we're people at the end of the day, despite the melanin in our skin, you know, or lack thereof. And, and wait, before I end this, I'm going to need the black men and black women that are kind of bitter. I'm going to need y'all to give up this color struck shit. This color struck shit is getting on my nerves. I, I'm going I'm to leave. Come on now. Stop. And for the last time, bitter black women, that's your son. That ain't your man. And for the father, too, that's your daughter. That ain't your girlfriend. Stop projecting grown shit on fucking kids and living vicariously through your children. Don't be pissed. At, it, it, don't be mad at them because they want to live their life and do their thing. And you didn't do that. Don't do that. That's not fair to them. Nor you either because you're both holding each other down. And you're creating a codependent relationship which is not good nor healthy. So, yeah. But like I said, I just want to talk about this because I feel that it's important. I feel that it is needed. And also, it encourages discussion. So now that I've said my piece, I want to know what you think. I want you guys to comment below. Tell me what you think about this whole video. Um, if you agree with me, if you disagree, um, I hope I made sense. But I probably rambled in some parts. I'm pretty sure I did. But anywho, thank you so much for um, watching, for sharing, for subscribing, and for hopefully understanding where I was coming from. Until next time, it is me, Leo Brown. Have a wonderful night. Have a great week. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.